uh, let's get started with some housekeeping. Uh, just a reminder, we'll, we're in uh, part two of exam seven, chapter nine review. Um, we're not pressed for time, so we take all the time we need today. We could even go to a part three on Thursday, which may happen. Um, and then the following week is Thanksgiving break. And then the week after that, uh, that Tuesday is a nominal date for the last exam. Uh, and on that date, I'll start a final exam review. And that will, that'll give us Tuesday and Thursday of the week after Thanksgiving to do the final exam review. <clears throat> and I would just suggest that you go back through your um, previous exams. Uh, you can brush up on some things that you feel comfortable with, but I would also focus on those things where you made mistakes, uh, where you got problems wrong or questions wrong. Uh, and then uh, focus in on that stuff so that you know the material for the ones you got wrong and you should be okay on the final. It'll have the same format as the chapter exams. It'll be a little bit longer, not, not unbearably long. Um, so, uh, any questions before we pick up where we left off? Okay. So, um, my records show that we were up to and about ready to pick up with number 32 in the exam review. So, let me see if I can share that. And there it is. Okay. I'm going to put that out of the way. Somebody showed up. Let me, let me take another quick look here. One, two, three, four, five, it's six. Judy, I just signed in. Oh, okay. All right. Excellent. Let's see. Make a couple of notes here. All right. <clears throat> so, number uh, 32. We're talking about the um, explanations for paramagnetism versus diamagnetism and mixed in there is the bond order <clears throat> in this set of questions. So we'll look at um, uh, 32 and what we want to do is how do we explain magnetic properties. We know that the localized electron model of the valence bond theory um, doesn't say anything about magnetism. It cannot explain magnetism. It's only the uh, molecular orbital model that will tell us, uh, will al allow us to predict magnetic properties. And what we're looking for in our molecular orbital scheme for any element or ion or molecule is, are there unpaired electrons? If there are no unpaired electrons, then that species will be diamagnetic. It will not respond to a magnetic field. But if there are at least one, and there can be more, unpaired electrons, then you will see paramagnetism. So in order to answer the question for number 32, how many of the following are paramagnetic, we need to know their molecular orbital structure. So that's um, fluorine, boron, oxygen, and nitrogen. Let's see, I'm gonna put them in 
boron. I'm going to put that one first. Uh, nitrogen's next. I'm going to take them from left to right. Uh, then we have oxygen and fluorine. Oxygen. Now, the reason I did it that way is because we know that uh, the, the breaking line for uh, SP mixing is between nitrogen and oxygen in that period. So if we go, and this is information that you'll have for the exam. If we go to our um, useful information there, then you can see that boron, diboron, and in order to simplify things, we're leaving out uh, period one. We're only talking about uh, period two. Period one would be considered the core. So we're only talking about the valence orbitals. Would give us our uh, sigma from the 2s orbital. And then we have sigma star from the 2s. And we have pi. Um, 2p. And of course we know that the sigmas only have one molecular orbital. The pi's can have two. So we would have one there and one there. Okay. <clears throat> so now we need to fill the orbitals. And we fill these orbitals the same way you fill electronic structure orbitals for elements. Lowest energy first and uh, up to the highest energy. So in this scheme, the shorthand, the lowest energy is on the left, highest on the right. So see how many valence electrons are in boron, and we're only using valence because we've only listed the second period here. So we only need to be concerned with valence electrons. And there are three for each boron, which makes six total. Right? So we have two here and two there. That's all you can put in a sigma. In the pi's, you can have two and two, or four. So that's two, four. Now we have two more. One there, one there. Hun's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle tell us that these are unpaired. So that means the diboron is paramagnetic. It's paramagnetic. Okay, uh, nitrogen is still without SP mixing. So it's going to have, um, the only thing we're gonna add here is a sigma from the, excuse me. I think I got my signals turned around. SP mixing is on the right. No, hold on a second. Confusing myself. Uh, refresh my memory here. Right. No SP mixing on the right, SP mixing on the left. So SP mixing here. Let's see. and no SP mixing here. There we go. Okay, so what does that mean? That means with nitrogen, we're going to have, with SP mixing, instead of going from, um, With no SP mixing, this sigma would be over here, and this pi would be over there. Okay. You go sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, sigma 2p, then you go to pi 2p, then you go to pi star 2p, then you go to sigma star 2p. That would be no mixing. 
with mixing, these two trade places. They normally would be here for this one, and that one would be over here. So now this one is here. And these two are there. So that requires mixing. Anything to the left of nitrogen to the left, oxygen to the right is no SP mixing. So while we're here on that subject, these don't change, but these do. Now this one will be here, there, like that. Then we would have, if we need it, So that's no mixing. All right, so now how many valence do electrons do we have for nitrogen? Dinitrogen is uh, five a piece would be 10. So we have uh, two, four, and then four more, four more here means that these are all paired. All right, you would have two and two, that's four. And then you would have the other two out here, which means Dinitrogen is, has no unpaired electrons, which means it is diamagnetic. How about oxygen? Oxygen is, let's see, six, 12 electrons. So there are two, four, four is eight, and then four more would be 12, right? Right, so, for oxygen, we don't need this last one. Okay. That means, oh, excuse me. Nobody said anything. That's a sigma, it only has two. <laughs> so, let's go back to the beginning and start over. Six plus six is 12. Two, four, six, and four, six and four is 10, so we do need that. And it only has two, right? Okay, that means that in this orbital, you have two unpaired electrons, which makes oxygen paramagnetic. Okay, now for fluorine. Fluorine has seven each, which is 14. So that means two, four, six, 10, and four is 14. So difluorine is diamagnetic. We've got a complete shell, a complete orbital out here. Well, actually two orbitals, but there are no unpaired electrons. So difluorine is diamagnetic. Did I hear somebody with a question? My imagination playing tricks on me. Okay, so now we can answer the question. Back to 32. One more. There we go. So 32 says, how many of the following are paramagnetic? That is, respond to a magnetic field. And we find that one, two. There are only two of them that respond to a magnetic field. That's why the answer is C. Let's see. OK. 33. All right, let me see. I was thinking 33. I can get 33 and 34 out of this discussion. So we'll do 33 first. And if I set it up right, we'll be able to uh, progress into 34. All right, 33 says, which charges on the O2 ion would give a bond order of 2.5? 
Well, let's see. Let's start with the uncharged O2. I mean, we just had it up there, so I'm gonna have to redraw that one. Okay. So again, I'm only interested in the um, valence structure. So we start off with a sigma from the 2s and a sigma star from the 2s. And then oxygen is no mixing. So that means we have now a sigma from the 2p. We have a pi from the 2p. We have a pi star from the 2p. And we have a sigma star from the 2p. OK. So uh, oxygen is going to have uh, six, 12 electrons, 6 plus 6. So that's 2, 4, 6. And then four would be more would be ten, and then two here. Okay. So I'm going to leave that one there because we're going to make ions. Okay. First, let's make a uh, a one minus ion. Okay. So we have the same thing over here, but we have one extra electron. Where does it go? There's still room in this one. So we have, that's the same, 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 same. And we have this one that now has three. We can go one more. Now that one has, that's full. So just as an aside, this one's paramagnetic. That one's still paramagnetic because there's one unpaired. But this one is diamagnetic because uh, they're all paired inside that last orbital. OK, um, let's see. I need one more, I think, uh, so that we can transition to Actually, I need a one plus and a two plus. Okay, if we're going to have a, a one plus ion, that means we need to take one of the electrons away from that orbital. So now we're down to one, still paramagnetic. I mean, that's not part of the question, but I'm just making the point. Now, if we take two electrons away from this one, what do we have left? Now we have left just this one. And nothing out there. Okay. So, um, the only one that in 33 is not part of the selection is, let's see, minus two, minus one. Minus one and plus one. So these three are part of question 33. And I'm going to use the other two for 34. So to answer 33, the question is which charge on an oxygen, on O2 ion, would give a bond order of 2.5? Right? So we just calculate the bond order, which is. Um, bonding electrons minus anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So bonding electrons here, this one, we have two, four, eight. And then anti-bonding, we have three and two is five divided by two. So that's one and a half bond order. How about this one? Well, this one has an extra antibonding. So that means it would be eight minus six divided by two. All right, so that's one. And then this one, um, let's just go ahead and do the count, count, count it up again. So we have two, four, eight, minus 
antibonding, two, and one is three. So that's five divided by two, which is two and a half. So the answer that answer 32, which was um, 33, excuse me. Which one has a two and a half bond order? It's this one right here. And in our, in our, uh, on our answer sheet, that would be C. Okay. Just have to be methodical about this. What's the question? Bond order, right? The only way you can calculate bond order is if you know the bonding and the antibonding electrons. That means you need the molecular orbital structure of the ion. So the best way to get that is start with the base and then add or subtract electrons depending on the charge. Then you can do the calculation. Okay, uh, 34. So we're going to erase that and keep everything else. 34. All right, 34 says, which of the following has the shortest bond length? Uh, and let's see, we're given this one. One minus, two minus, one minus, two minus, and one OT. So for 34, we're only interested in these. Okay. So. How do we answer that question? Which one has the shortest bond length? Bond length uh, is inversely proportional to bond strength. So the stronger the bond, the shorter the length. And how do we know the strength of the bond? Bond order. The higher the bond order, the stronger the bond, which means shortest bond length. So what we need is the one with the highest bond order. We've already calculated these three, right? So of these three, that one's the strongest. So let's check out O2, right? That's one of our selections, yes, O2, and see what its bond order is. So we have two, four, eight. Actually, we don't need this one. eight minus two four divided by two equals two so o2 plus is still the highest bond order which means the shortest bond length and uh o2 plus is d Okay, uh, let me flip over and see if we could, before I erase all that, see if I can use it again some other time. Um, no, I don't see any other place. So I, I think it's safe to erase that one. Uh, 56, but there are, there are a whole bunch of others involved in 56, so We'll just reconstruct it if we get that far today. Okay. So the moral of this story is you got to know how to write the molecular orbital structure for a molecule. Simple molecules, we're not going to get real complex. Simple molecules like these diatomics. Okay, that was 34. Let's see, 35, does it have value? What's the bond order of Ne2? Well, that'd be kind of fun.
first of all, what is Ne2? Dineon, right? It's a noble gas. And as a rule of thumb, noble gases don't form bonds with each other. You usually find them as separate atoms. This just illustrates. So what's the bond order of Ne2? What would its structure be? So uh, Ne2, that's still in the second period. I'm looking, I've got another periodic table up on the wall. That's why I'm looking up there instead of down here. <clears throat> so let's draw the, the valence molecular orbitals for Ne2. Hypothetical Ne2. So we would have uh, sigma from the 2s, sigma star from the 2s, sigma from the 2p, uh, pi from the 2p, because neon is to the right, is oxygen and to the right, so there's no mixing. So it would have this arrangement, then we would have this one, star antibonding, and then we would have this one, uh, star, p. and that should be enough. Let's see if it is. Neon, how many do we have in the valence shell of neon? Each one has eight, right? That's a complete filled second period. So it'd be 16 total. All right, two, four, six, 10, 14, right? 16. So we used up all of our electrons. Now what's the bond order? All right. Uh, bonding electrons. Two, four, eight. That's it. Anti-bonding electrons. Two, six, seven, eight. Okay. So we got a bond order of zero. That predicts no bond. And that, in fact, is what we see. We don't have dineon molecules. For 35 is, well, A is the answer there. Okay. Let me close that up and let it equilibrate again. It's starting to get a light. Okay. Um, turn the page. Let's see if 36 is worth looking at. It'll take some time, but we could do it. 36. Yep. Yeah. There's something to be learned there. Let's do 36. All right, the question is, which of the following statements is false? So, uh, we look at the answers, right, test taking technique and multiple choice questions, and we find that E says two of the above. What do they mean by that? Two of the above are false. All right, so that means we've got to do all of them to find out if more than one is false. If only one is false, then we could stop at that one. But since we have the choice of two of the above being false, we got to do all four of them. So let's see, A is, uh, C2 is paramagnetic. C2. So carbon is to the left, nitrogen or to the left is mixing. So that means carbon would be, and again, we're only looking at the valence molecular structure, 2s, 2s star, sigma 2p, and uh, no, sorry, these guys switch places, pi 2p, and then sigma. 
and then pi star two p and sigma star two p. Those two flip places when you have mixing. Okay, so how many electrons do we have in the valence shell for carbon? Four each is eight. We have two, four, and four is eight. Right? So we don't need those. So what does that mean about the magnetic properties of C2? That means that all our electrons are paired, which means it's diamagnetic. And A says it's paramagnetic, right? So if it says para, that means false. So we found one of them, but we can also answer B. B is true because B says diamagnetic, which is true. Now we look at C, the carbon-carbon bond in C2, two minus is stronger than the one in CH3, CH3. All right. So that I don't complicate things. Um, in order to know the uh, strength of the bond, we need to know the bond order. Right? So we've got to look at uh, the bond order for C22 minus. So C22 minus would take two electrons from this one. Right? By the way, what's the bond order for this one? Four, five, six, minus two. Let's see. Is that right? Let me check myself. Okay, for two minus, we would have to add two electrons. So they would go into a bonding orbital. So the, the, the bond order of this one is four plus two is six, minus two is four, divided by two is two. So the bond order here is two. The bond order here would add two more here. So that would be two plus two is four and eight. Eight minus two is six. Bond order here would be six divided by two is three. So this has a stronger bond than that one. The question is, uh, what's the, what's the bond order in Yeah, what's the bond order in uh, this molecule? Okay. Now, actually, we don't, you well, know, we probably should calculate the bond order. Just a cursory glance says that that's a single bond, right? So it would be uh, weaker than this one. But we don't know for sure because we haven't done the calculation yet. So um, actually, we can make that statement. The reason being uh, this bond is a very close to a triple bond, which makes it strong and short. This bond we know is a single bond. It can't be anything else. Uh, so if we do the bond order, we should come out with uh, one, maybe one and a half tops. Um, let's see, can I do that?
Yeah, we can do that. This is a single bond, so this is stronger than that one. It's also shorter. So for D, both of those statements are true. So this is C. So D and E are both true because this one says stronger. Well, that one's stronger. Yep. This one is stronger, and this one has a um, shorter bond length because we're pair comparing a triple bond with a single bond. That's a valid comparison. I just had to stop and think for a second, say, can I say that? And matter of fact, I can. I don't need to calculate the bond order of this one. And it's a good thing because it's a little more complicated than I want to get into right now. Why? Because you've got all these hydrogens, plus you have these two carbons, and you've got to draw molecular orbital structure for the whole thing if you want to calculate bond order. But since bond order is roughly um, in the same ballpark as single, double, triple, then we can make a statement, particularly when it's that far apart. This is definitely on the triple end. This is definitely on the single end. Okay, so that was 36. Let's see if we need to spend time on 37. Well, if we do 37, we've got to draw a structure for a um, shoot. I can't even remember the names. A uh, for a heteronuclear diatomic. Uh, we've been studying homonuclears, right? Uh, diboron, dicarbon, dinitrogen, dioxygen, difluorine. Now we need to look at the CN, which is a uh, heteronuclear. The problem there is that the energy diagrams of the atoms from which they're uh, drawn are shifted. Right? Carbon's going to be at one level, nitrogen's going to be at another. We're going to think carbon is the carbon is the higher, nitrogen is the lower. And then you've got to draw a uh, a plausible molecular orbital model for that molecule. Um, so. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you combine carbon and nitrogen, carbon and nitrogen are both on that end of the periodic chart here where you get SP mixing. So that allows us, um, since we're not, we're not using one that is prone to SP mixing versus one that's not, both of them are prone to SP mixing, carbon and nitrogen. So we can, we can make a pretty good guess as to the uh, shorthand molecular structure um, for this one. So it's 37. So for this one, we're going to have that. That's the same. Oops. Then we're going to have this one uh, to P. Uh, no, excuse me. SP mixing, right? There we go. Now we get this one and and this one. There we go. 
So we just had to flip these two. They normally would be here. Both carbon and nitrogen are prone to SP mixing. So those flip. Now, uh, how many electrons are we talking about? Well, carbon has uh, four. Nitrogen has five plus one for the ion. So five plus four is nine and one is 10. So we have 10 electrons. We have two here, two here, four there. So that's eight, nine, 10. So we actually only need that group. So that means this molecule has all paired electrons, which makes it diamagnetic. All right, so let's answer our question, or try to answer some. Uh, a is paramagnetic. Is that true or false? That's false. So A is false because it says it's paramagnetic and it's not paramagnetic. Uh, let's see. I'll take a minute and, and check to be sure. I've got everybody covered. Ah, there's Cody. Okay. And let the floor check you. Justice. Okay, and we'll get back to the problem. So A is false. It's diamagnetic, not paramagnetic. 37 then is the total number of electrons is what? Well, we know the total number of electrons is 10 because we needed that to answer the first one. So B is false. It's not 14 electrons, it's 10 electrons. Uh, let's see, did I do that right? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, five and four. Okay, I just found a mistake. Which of the following is false? A is false, definitely, but B is false also. So the answer can't be A. All right, so that's a problem. I need to change the total number of electrons to uh, 10. That would make it true. The bond order is what? What's the bond order? Well, we're saying the bond order is three. Is that true? Let's see. Two. Four, eight. Eight minus two is six divided by two is three. So this one's true. I got that one right. Uh, it has two pi bonds. Right? How many pi bonds do you have with an order of three? Bond order of three. If the bond order is three, then you have a triple bond which means only one sigma, that's all you can have, but two pi's. So you have one sigma and two pi bonds. Uh, that's uh, D. So with two pi bonds, D is, is true. And then E says all of these are true. Well, all of them are not true. In fact, two of them were false. which means there's no right answer for the, for 37 the way it's written. <clears throat> you think after the years I've been using this that I get it right by now. So in order to make the, the answer A as the only false one, I've got to change the answer for B to 10 electrons, not 14.
how would it be 14? The only way it could be 14, well, there's several ways it could be 14. Uh, difluorine would be 14, but we're talking about heteronuclear. So there's no way I could make it, I couldn't make it 14. No. So the way it's written, A and B are both false. The way I, I need to make the change is to, B is total number of electrons is 10. Then I can say that A is the only false one. So I've got some corrections to make for that one. That also tells me something else, that none of you worked that problem yet. Otherwise you would have found that mistake and called me on it before we even started today. All right, um, 38 is probably gonna take a while. Um, okay. Yeah, that's going to take a little bit longer than we've got. So let me. Take a look at 39. All right, 39 is one of those. looking at the NO molecule. Um, in order to do the NO, we have to decide whether or not there is SP mixing. And um, I just have to tell you. Uh, let's see. Actually, the problem tells you that there is SP mixing. Look at the answers. The answers are listed like this. All your choices are demonstrating SP mixing, right? So you don't have to decide. Those are your only choices, and there are no oddballs in there like none of the above or one of the two of the above or so forth. So that scheme tells you that this molecule has SP mixing, and all you have to do is. Uh, fill in the numbers, right? So with NO, nitrogen has five, oxygen has six valence electrons. So I have five and six equals 11 electrons. So you just have two, four, and four is eight, and two more, and then one here. Right, that's full, so we have to put another one over here. So two, two, four, two, one is E. That was easier than I thought it was going to be, simply because the answers tell you that there is SP mixing. And all you have to do is count the number of valence electrons and plug them in. You have to know that sigma can only have two, whereas pi molecular orbitals can have four total. If they have exactly, if they have exactly four, there's no, uh, there are no unpaired electrons. Anything less than four, you have unpaired electrons. Okay. 
เอ่อเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเด
correct? Two, four, six. Well, actually, uh, eight times three is 24. So we don't have any lone pairs. But we want to try to make an octet for sulfur, don't we? So in order to do that, we could, uh, we could take two from here, make a double bond. Or we could do this. I'm not going to draw the lone pairs in there because you know where they're coming from. And we can have this. So we can have three equivalent resonant structures. So that means one is true. Uh, Roman numeral two, the dipoles associated with each SO bond are equal in magnitude. The dipoles depend only upon what elements on, are on either end of the bond. And in fact, we know that all these bonds are equivalent. Even though we have to draw them separately, that's an artifact of the valence bond theory and the localized electron model. But all the bonds are equivalent in, uh, are equal in magnitude. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to draw those resonance structures. We'd just pick one. And this bond would be shorter than those two. Or if we pick that one, this one would be short, and those two would be longer. So Roman numeral two is true. How about three? The sulfur atom is sp2 hybridized. So how do we know sp2 hybridized? Because in order for sulfur to form a trigonal planar structure with no lone pairs, is to have three bonds hybridized or three orbitals atomic orbitals hybridized would be one s and then two p's that's the only way that you can get trigonal planar in that model so it's sp2 hybridized that's true so all three are true All right, so let's see if I need to dwell on any of these others. Okay, maybe we should tackle 43. 43 talks about benzene, which was at the tail end of chapter nine. And what it tried to do was take um, take usable results from both the molecular orbital model and from the valence bond model and put them together and try to make sense of the molecule using both of them. So let's see, which of these struck these statements about benzene is true? See, am I still? Yeah, I'm still on the board. All carbon atoms in the benzene are sp3 hybridized. Is that true? sp3. Hybridized. All sp3. Well, what would they have to be to be sp3 hybridized? Well, if we draw the structure using a shorthand, right? There's a carbon at each one of these. And we know that there are only six hydrogens. Okay. In order to complete the structure and make the octet, we would have to, of course, draw the Lewis dot structure. 
And the Lewis dot structure tells us that actually each one of those carbons is sp2 hybridized. It's one, two, three bonds for the carbon and no lone pairs. So that makes uh, A is false. How about B? Benzene contains only pi bonds between carbon atoms. Well, if you draw it this way, no. There are uh, sigma bonds all the way around and some pi bonds using the valence bond theory in the localized electron model, uh, you only get three pi bonds. Now that's within the localized electron model that we can say that. That's why B then under those conditions is false. And as in a matter of fact, they're somewhere between sigma and pi. Um, because all the bonds are equivalent in length and strength. And if we calculated the bond order, we'd find that they're one and a half. They're not two and they're not one. They're one and a half, all of them. The bond order of each Carbon, carbon bond, and benzene. Oh, I answered my question already. <laughs> C. <laughs> the uh, C is the carbon, carbon bond is one and a half bond order. That's because it has characteristics of sigma and pi bonds in our localized electron model. Now, if we actually um, if we actually did the uh, molecular orbital calculation, which would be kind of daunting for, uh, for what we're able to do at this point, we would find that the bond order is one and a half. So we're sort of uh, reasoning our way to the bond order by saying it's halfway between two and one because you have a mixture of single of sigmas and pi's. So C is actually true. Bond order of one and a half. Uh, D, benzene is an example of a molecule that displays ionic bonding. Well, that's just stupid. There's no, there are no ions in there. There's no metal versus non-metal. These are all non-metals. And then of course, E, all of the statements are false, is, is false on its face because we found a true one right here. Bond order is one and a half. Now we didn't get it the uh, quantitative way, right? Calculating the quantitative bond order for any of one of these carbons would be difficult with what we, our current state of knowledge, right? We're not chemistry majors. Um, so we're not expected to know those things. We don't have time to go into more complicated molecules. So we have to reason our way to the bond order and the correlation between bond order as a uh, bond order two is a double bond, bond order three is a triple bond, bond order one is a single bond, then between ones and twos is one and a half. Okay, let's see. Here, I'm running down the clock and as suspected, we're gonna to go to a part three on Thursday. Uh, let's see if I can find a convenient place to stop. Okay, let's go to uh, 44. Okay, that over there. And 
and we're going to slip back into hybridization here. So here's our cent uh, the central atom of SF4 would be sulfur. So we're going to have this, 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 here, 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 here. Sulfur is in uh, the, it's a calcogen. It's one of the oxygen family. So it's going to have six. Each one of these is going to have seven. So four times seven is 28. And the total then is 34. Okay. So uh, two, four, six, eight of the bonds gives us 26. And then we have two, four, six for each fluorine. So four times six is 20, 24. We have two electrons left over, they go right here. On the sulfur, okay. So uh, the VSCPR model says one, two, three, four, five electron groups means what? Trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal. Um, let's get back to the question. What's the hybridization on the sulfur atom? We don't, we didn't even have to do that. Although it's good to do, it's, it's a good habit to get into. So if we have five groups, what's the hybridization on sulfur? Well, you need five atomic orbitals to go into the hybridization. We know that sp3 only gives us four. So we go to D's to get the other two. So D2SP3 is the hybridization on sulfur. Is there any hybridization required for fluorine? No, you don't have to hybridize fluorine. It's only got a sigma bond and it can overlap um, one, it can overlap a P orbital with one of these hybridized orbitals. As with a localized electron model uh, of the valence bond theory, you don't, you don't have to hybridize. You don't hybridize unless you absolutely have to. Now we have to with sulfur. That's the only way we can get that trigonal bipyramid out of this theory. But we don't have to hybridize fluorine because it has a spare P orbital that can overlap with one of these hybrid orbitals and everybody's happy. Okay, 44. Uh, we got four minutes. Let's see. I'm not going to do 45 because in order to do 45, just set it up like you would oxygen, like we did before. Only in this case, uh, for nitrogen, you would have to introduce SP mixing. Whereas with oxygen, before when we did the ions, we didn't have to mix. But with nitrogen, you do need to set it up with SP mixing uh, molecular orbitals, fill them in, and find out which one has the shortest bond, which would be the highest bond order. And then 46, you can use that same information to answer 46 because you've already calculated the bond order on these ions. So just answer 45 and 46 at the same time. Okay. Let's see here. So I think what I'm going to do <clears throat> I'm going to mark it here and we're going to call it a day at 47 and we'll pick it up on uh, the 19th 19 November 17. we'll pick it up with 47 on the 19th and do a part three um, and by hook or by crook we'll, we'll finish it out with part three with a review on uh, chapter nine.
and that'll get you set up for the exam for uh, exam seven uh, between now and the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. You can take it any time between now and then. Um, but you might want to wait till we finish the review before you do. Okay. So that's it for today. And if there are no other questions, I'll stop share, of course. <laughs>